Okay, thanks for the introduction and uh, good morning everybody. Uh, today we'll be talking about a uh, healthcare support system for assisted living facilities and uh, uh, describe a uh, solution based on the Internet of Things technologies uh, to, to tackle and to experiment on a specific uh, use case. Um, the goal of the work that uh, I'm describing, that is described in the paper, is uh, uh, try to leverage and to apply uh, what we know in terms of technologies and methods and architectures in the Internet of Things uh, and wearable computing by applying that to a specific uh, user domain, which is that of ambient assisted living. Um, in particular, ambient assisted living is a wide area okay, that applies to the most uh, human activities. Uh, um, our target environment uh, was that of assisted living facilities, which I will define shortly in the next slide. Uh, so the, the talk would follow the, the traditional outline. I will start by describing the problem that we are uh, worked on and uh, how we define the um, requirements uh, for this problem, which is uh, actually um, the, the hardest part to do because a lot of uh, a lot of works uh, just uh, show technology related uh, uh, results uh, but uh, fail to take into account the user, uh, the real user requirement, the user real user needs. Uh, and then I'll, I'll walk you through the functionality and the architecture of the prototype we built uh, and, and comment a bit uh, uh, with you the, the, the results uh, of the experiments that we did. Okay, so um, we worked in uh, assisted living facilities. What are these? Uh, so in general, when we talk about ambient assisted living, AAL, uh, we are talking about uh, environments, smart environments, uh, uh, houses, rooms, hospitals, or whatever, that help people in uh, completing their daily tasks, uh, uh, even if we, when these people uh, suffer from some disabilities or have some problems due to the elderly ages or some other kind of weaknesses. Um, and uh, if if we sample the literature, we see that in the field of ambient assisted living focused mainly on two types of environments. So people, especially elderly, working, uh, sorry, living at home alone, uh, trying to keep people at home as long as possible without uh, or before um, putting them into hospitals or, or nursery care houses. Th there's a lot of research here. Uh, other research is in the health uh, sector uh, about um, hospitals, so structured care facilities, uh, uh, how we can improve the work of doctors and nurses. So on these two fields we find a lot of literature. Uh, but there's a middle uh, ground there, uh, sort of uh, um, um, the growing, uh, there's a growing number of structures that we call the uh, assisted living facilities, that are facilities for hosting people who are still not, uh, what, well, are not yet uh, in, the in total independence, so they cannot live alone, but they are not yet, uh, let's say, medical in, they don't have, uh, say, serious medical conditions, so they don't need full assistance. So they have partial, let's say, independence, and they can, uh, they are building these kind of facilities where they can live together uh, in a semi-independent way. They have their own house, but there are some, maybe sir, uh, some supervisors, some caregivers, and they help them when, in the tasks that they need, and uh, they provide a minimum, uh, say, support, and, uh, but there's no, actually really uh, medical care in those cases, it's not needed, okay? And this is uh, uh, especially for uh, disabled, per adult disabled persons that once they reach they said, the plot of, the, of their disability, they just need to find an environment where to live uh, with some supervision. Okay, so this is the, the, the context in which we're working. And uh, uh, what we did uh, was try to follow a user-centered process uh, in order to um, analyze what kind of, uh, say, technological solution we can achieve uh, uh, by focusing on the needs uh, of the people, uh, especially the needs of the caregivers, uh, because uh, um, of the settings, uh, uh, the, the key person in these assi um, uh, assisted living facilities are caregivers that need to manage the whole structure. Uh, the different, the, the guests, okay, the disabled persons, have their own specific needs, but on top of that, uh, you need to run the structure. So we followed, the, um, say, the first we uh, try to un uh, discuss with people the requirements, so what is more needed the, in their daily life, uh, and then design a system and build a prototype uh, by trying to use and adopt, uh, let's say, off-the-shelf technologies and standard uh, 
uh, architectures and languages and so on. So just to, to check what we can do I say, with current IoT technologies. And finally, we came back to the people, and so to, to the users, and test the system that we built uh, and then try to learn from this testing. So actually, we start and end with the people. Um, the requirement analysis took uh, some time and we'd be, we did a, a, a set of focus groups with different uh, caregivers of different uh, uh, um, uh, system facilities and uh, uh, we talked both with people that deal with persons with uh, physical disabilities, motor disabilities and people working, caregivers working with people with cognitive disabilities so they have different take on the problem of course and those, those caregivers mainly as a background there they define themselves as educators or social care assistants, but they are not nurses, they are not doctors uh, in that, that context. So it's a very um, say particular case. And out of this, uh, uh, this uh, previous work, out of these focus groups, so we identified a set of major requirements. So what do they need? And it turned out uh, that uh, uh, these caregivers have really simple um, demands. Uh, they, mm, they they don't need a lot of uh, say sophisticated issues, but they have some um, panic points uh, in their lives. Uh, some points, some activities that they cause them trouble, they cause them anxiety, they cause them uh, fear of not assisting well the person. Actually, what they, the the top one priority that they get they, 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 they emerged from the focus group was that of the alerting mechanism. So people at the guest uh, being able needs to be able to alert the caregiver when something goes wrong when it doesn't feel bad uh, good when it falls out of the bed or out of the wheelchair or in many other cases that may happen and especially in the night time if the facility is big uh, there's uh, just a, a reduced number of caregivers they need to make rounds and uh, they they are afraid that uh, uh, a person is feeling bad and until the next round uh, sorry, they can't uh, uh, they can't help them help them so uh, we um, identified some main use cases, so a person uh, that voluntarily asks for assistance by a caregiver, caregiver or the system may be able automatically to detect some critical conditions like, like falling, like uh, uh, seizures. Um, and another point was uh, alerting among caregivers. So when you're doing the night shift and you're alone, what happens if you as a caregiver have some problem okay and so uh, all the people in the house uh, uh, will lack assistance if you if you have uh, some some issues some medical issues yourself and so you want to be at least alerting somebody who's on call and say okay come help me because i have a problem and i cannot assist my my, uh, my patients so the, basically all this was about alerting and uh, we wanted to uh, try to develop that in a way that satisfies some sort of quality requirements uh, uh, like uh, I, I, I won't go into detail into each of them but uh, uh, a system that should be built for the type of work environment that they have so people should not be given yet another smartphone or a tablet or something like that uh, in the in the medical care or in the nursing care uh, actually hands are, are a real uh, tool that uh, the caregivers need to have free they, they cannot bring with them another device or in their pockets or in their hands because that will, let's say, um, make there will be a problem in the activity they need to do. So we try to be as uh, little invisible as possible, as portable as possible, as reliable as possible, uh, uh, just to have some, let's say, uh, added functionality instead of added trouble for them. Okay, um, so basically. The the system we built was I'll say, nothing uh, say specially uh, or too complex. Uh, just putting together it was mainly a uh, system integration approach of putting together the necessary uh, devices, necessary networks, uh, necessary application to support those use cases in a way that could be accepted uh, by the users. And so actually the architecture is based on a, a smartphone, a smart watches that are given to uh, both uh, guests, so disabled, we imagine disabled persons and caregivers. And on the smartwatch you have different applications running. Of course, uh, today's smartwatches still need a smartphone to be coupled with because they don't have connectivity on their own. This uh, 
it's a, it's a pain point in our architecture because you need to have these devices, these smart phones that you don't really use, uh, but use them as communication bridge. But something's coming out in the market of miniaturized devices just for giving connectivity to smart watches. So maybe next year we'll see something that will uh, enable us to get rid of the smart phones. And then, of course, we have a, a, a server cloud system that is able to manage all the messaging uh, between all the different uh, um, smartwatches, actually. And uh, the main workflow uh, of the alerting system uh, is described by these three pictures. So let's imagine that uh, um, a guest needs some help. So maybe the guest has, um, issues a voluntary request, so actually basically presses the button or just taps on the, on the smartphone depending on the configuration, and uh, this generates a request for help. Or maybe the smartphone itself, uh, sorry, the smartwatch itself uh, is able to detect a critical condition, and so the alert is generated automatically. In both cases, all the caregivers on duty are alerted on their uh, smartwatch application. And, uh, <coughs> sorry, and uh, uh, one of them, at least one of them should take charge of that call. So one of them should, the, the first one that will respond, okay, I take care of that. So that, that particular patient, that particular person needs, I will go there. And so the alert is somewhat uh, silenced because uh, uh, the, mm, the person, uh, there, there is a caregiver that, that now will go and check, okay? Of course, mm, we need to be sure uh, that the, the assistance request is, uh, is honored, is satisfied, and so the alarm will be dismissed, uh, really dismissed, only when the caregiver, uh, say, meets the person that generates the alarm, and uh, we check that with a proximity uh, sensor to check whether uh, actually I, uh, I went there and, uh, and, and I'm assisting the person, okay? Just to avoid uh, caregivers to forget the request when there are too many. Mm -hmm. And in, the ca in case they forget, the, 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 the request is, generated again uh, for all the caregivers and okay the request is still, is still pending there's a very simple workflow for that okay so it's something that uh, really fits within the the, the, the daily activity the caregivers do their own duties when they receive a, uh, an alert uh, and they just need to confer go and then assist the person and um, and this is done with minimum uh, investment so instead of a so a ringer that some something rings uh, all over the house and then the, maybe if it's in the middle of the light uh, of the night it uh, we, we wakes everybody up uh, and uh, s um, uh, it, it creates some discomfort in the, in the users and the caregivers this is actually uh, say sends information where it's needed and um, uh, let's say it's uh, really simple as a workflow and also the interface is really simple the the, the first picture is just to show an example of the uh, user interface uh, that the guests have for sending an alarm and for checking whether the alarm is being called or not and uh, the bottom uh, picture show the application for the caregivers uh, that send uh, that show the list of the of the alarms uh, is currently active uh, and confirm that they just uh, uh, say uh, accepted to 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 service to a uh, given alert. So, actually, the, um, the, uh, the these are these all the interfaces that the caregivers and the users uh, need to see and need to understand. Uh, remember that we also have some maybe cognitive impaired people, so we cannot uh, imagine having a, a too complex system for that. And of course, there's a management dashboard that uh, can be used to, to, to define the shifts, uh, the shifts of the, of the caregivers, and uh, to monitor as, uh, um, what, what's going on in the in the nursery home. Okay, uh, so this was let's say a quite uh, say simple or straightforward implementation uh, by trying to use as much as possible, let's say, uh, as I said, of the shell components and market components. And uh, uh, we, the interesting part uh, for, for us was, of course, the, the, the evaluation of the results. So uh, we started from one specific need uh, that, mm, well, as engineers, we could see it uh, as trivial. I may want, uh, I, I, we could have imagined much more complex stuff like, uh, you know, indoor localization or uh, detection of, of more specific issues, but it turned out that it wasn't. Uh, uh, such a problem and uh, also the problem of uh, 
errors in detection so false positive uh, i generate an alert when it's the people is not really falling down it's not a real problem in the specific case because you know caregivers are there are there they it's their job just to go and check in on the people and uh, so if they are called once more for a system say error but it's not bad for them so they they, they do it anyway they, so it turned out that the, 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 requir the actual requirement coming out of the focus group was quite different from what we could have imagined by, by studying and say the situation as engineers. So we came back to the caregivers at the end of the system uh, implementation and we did some tests with them. First of all, we what we call the functional test, so a simulation, say, in the in the facility. We took a group of caregivers, say, okay, let's you play the role of the patient, you play the role of the caregiver, let's try to s try the system, check it, just say simulating the, the, the complete workflow in the different ways, and uh, using but using the actual devices, so with the uh, complete con uh, configuration. And then the second test is we call the operational test, uh, when we installed in the left op uh, in a full operational state uh, all the system for 36 hours in a row. Uh, and so also caregivers shifted and exchanged, they changed the, 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 the smart watches and a couple of users were equipped with, uh, with all the systems. So not all of them, only two of them were, were monitored just to, to make this, uh, this kind of trial. And after the, two, the two, two, two stages of the test, the functional and the operational one, we had a discussion with the participants and asked them some questions about uh, their feedback, their perception of, uh, of the system. Um, first of all, it's the functional test. Uh, we, we, I, I just highlighted five my main questions for the from the discussion from the questioners. Uh, Whether the system is useful, the scale was one to five, the, the average uh, response was four. The system is intuitive. Again, is it usable? Mm, some people uh, had some little trouble why with, the, with the smartwatch interface because they were not familiar with that. Uh, portability and uh, positive influence on the daily work. And uh, I think this is the most important question. Will a system like this, so will wearable technology, will internal technology, will help you during your work daily? Huh? And uh, we had uh, quite a positive response. Uh, for the operational test, uh, mm, the responses were a bit more negative because as always when you when you see a new toy, you like it. Uh, when you use it for a while, you can you start finding you know, some flaws and problems, and uh, and this uh, um, uh, it was really important feedback for us. Uh, uh, for example, about uh, uh, system usability, and uh, I uh, try here to highlight uh, the, the main uh, points from the discussion uh, that we had to motivate uh, why this uh, say final score was uh, a bit lower. Uh, the system so turned out to be quick and easy to learn. Yes, actually, functionalities are quite basic. Uh, uh, caregivers appreciated the wearables because they, they didn't require them to uh, to, uh, to carry any item with them. Um, but smartwatches uh, uh, were too difficult to operate by people with motor disabilities. So there are small buttons and uh, yeah, and um, and uh, uh, they. Um, they require fine motor skills to be operated, and not, all of, not depending on the people, but not all of them could, uh, could operate them. So it, what we need is more say, accessibility in the user interface of, of smart devices. Mm -hmm. um, some caregivers suggested also uh, being able to call with the uh, voice recognition mechanism, so people calling out uh, instead of just pressing a button. Of course, this depends on of course, the, 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 the speech capability of the person. So, as always, when you are dealing with with uh, person with disability, what uh, is necessary is more flexibility in the system to accommodate for the user specific needs. Um, for uh, the people with uh, well, for the trial for with people with cognitive disabilities, actually uh, most of the time in which the system was used uh, were pranks. <laughs> were just okay. Let's call it say, see if she runs or something like that. So actually, um, it it would require a longer observation period just to to to, to let the, um, the the transient period in which the system is new and also inspires pranks and so on and to see how it will be actually used during the normal uh, time so the data that we uh, collected on those uh, 36 hours is not so reliable because they were playing with that and not quite really using it 
uh, battery life is still an issue everywhere because uh, you need to remember to recharge the telephone, uh, to remember to recharge the, the, the watch and so on every every couple of days or, or, or so. And, uh, and, and, and if you're thinking of doing that on, on a wide scale, then you're losing a lot of time about these issues. And uh, and not all of the caregivers in during the trial were really convinced. So actually, half of them would let's say would buy the idea, would use the system. Half of them are still uh, dubious in some way. Okay, so that concludes my 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 talk. Uh, and uh, just my main points is just uh, we, we try to, to do a study of, of a gr group of target users that are often neglected. So not uh, the uh, individual person, not the do doctors and nurses, but this middle ground of people that that are growing in number and then assisting, uh, say, a person with difficulty and with disabilities. We applied the user-centered design process uh, and we did some infield testing with a with a uh, with a really uh, working prototype by using uh, essentially of the shell technologies. Um, we still don't have the final word on this topic because we need to do uh, some say, additional trial to have some uh, more reliable data uh, to understand the system potentiality. Okay, thanks for uh, listening and uh, here are my, my contacts and if you have time I will be happy to, to get some questions. Thank you.